What are they doing? Ooh, this room. I also saw this. What? So cool. Oh, got him. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's check out the physics of the landings. What is all the tech going on here? You better get to f Previously on The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 3. So Mando and Bo-Katan became children of the Watch. They found that mythosaur down deep in the bottom of Mandalore, but, but Bo-Katan hasn't told anyone yet. I wonder what's going to happen there. Dr. Pershing was mind flayed, and Elia Kane is on the loose. Yeah, I think uh, Elia Kane. We'll see where this goes. Not sure. She looks evil, but she's working for the New Republic. Ooh. We'll see. I don't know how to read her. Is she like, is she a free agent on her own doing bad stuff? Or is she actually working for someone? I don't know. We'll see. What'd you think about this episode? Um, Mandalorian season three, episode four. I thought it was six out of 10 overall. Um, ten. The dragon storyline where one of the, uh, the foundlings got taken away. I don't know. I thought the Mandalorians were making some poor decisions and I was getting annoyed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the idea of the dragon, though. That was cool. Um, Grogu's escape from the Jedi Temple was the highlight of the episode. That was so cool. That was awesome. I really so enjoyed cool. that because that that merged like the, 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 the originals with what's going on now into this mm -hmm. cool like, oh, it's the Jedi Temple on fire. Oh, I know that. I know that. You know, ship. Yeah. It's really. There's cool. somewhere Anakin's killing the younglings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The death, destruction. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, also, Grogu becoming a Mandalorian. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but he's on starting. That would be awesome. Yeah. He's got that Beskar chainmail, and then also mm -hmm. the the disc thing in the front. Remember what it's called? Mm -hmm. Rondel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's not what you think a Mandalorian like looks like, but whew, could be cool. But according to the Mandalorian Creed, you don't have to be human. Like, you can be whatever. Yeah. 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 So overall, I thought this episode, not the greatest, but it does feel like it's setting up stuff. So still setting up stuff, just like episode three. What did you think? I liked the idea that Jar Jar has a humanoid Jedi counterpart. <laughs> did you notice that? So, so the actor, okay, so the actor that saved Grogu, the, the, the Jedi... That's the mm -hmm. same actor that played Jar Jar. I did so know like, that. If you're, oh, okay. Very yeah. cool. And so I like the idea of Jar Jar's like walking around Coruscant and he like says some opinion and another guy's like, I think the same thing. <laughs> and it's like, it's like if he was, a, he's like the twin, but from a different mother. And it turns out like one became a Jedi and the other one is Jar Jar. And like, I like, that's my headcanon. Um, Grogu being a force sensitive Mando. Oh my goodness. That'd be so cool. I mean, I mean, I mean, there's only been one before one Mandalorian that was a Jedi. But Grogu, I mean, I guess, is he a Jedi? He's not going to be trained with the Jedi thoughts anymore. So he's kind of force sensitive. Uh, I mean, he's definitely force sensitive, but he's not necessarily a Jedi. Um, he could do some some evil stuff. We'll see. He could get corrupted. Oh, man, this this guy's life's going to be fascinating. Overall, I give it a four out of ten. This was a super fun episode. But the Mandalorians, they're badass warriors, but their battle tactics against this dragon knee bird thing, it just feels like you guys should be more competent than this. Like, like I, I like that Bogotan was named the leader of the war party, so they have some structure there. But like, when that bird is flying around, st start stabbing it in its eyes. Like, what, what are you guys doing? Um, so for that reason, you got you to gotta hold these Mandos in high self-esteem. A high esteem. It's got to be a four out of ten for me. Hmm. So I think we kind of felt the same way. Some of their decision making and tactics were a little. You, you we'll man, supposed to be it. hard. You guys need to live like a thug life. Like fuck people up. Right. That's right. So. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We got some. We'll talk about it. Yeah, we got some stuff to show. Yeah. Let's get into this episode. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Dangerous training. The first thing up is a clip. Oh, this is the training sequence right at the beginning of the episode. So, so I was thinking, like, they're using real bullets, or I guess plasma, plasma yeah, and, lasers. and knives and swords. Fibro and, and it's like, we're in training here. We don't want to hurt each other. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Get, get, a, yeah. get a wooden knife. You <laughs> should practice yeah. with that. We don't even have live knives. Yeah. Let's watch. Fire. Fire. 
fire. Explosions. I mean, once someone's burnt, there's no dialing that back. <laughs> that's, that's a one-way action. And there's all kinds of like chaotic trading going on with live rounds and live weapons. Mm. I mean, some crosstalk there, some cross walking, and it could be yeah, some injuries. Sure. Someone oh, backs God. up a little bit too much, they get stabbed in the back. Like, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> just just section off this this uh, this beach here. Yeah, I really like that the foundlings are are practicing are are. are training next to the adults like they all it's all the same culture like i love it i mean i like that part but yeah i like the kids near the danger but don't get hurt in training don't get hurt in training (laughs) kid rebelling against the creed oh yeah yeah he is too young to speak the creed and so too young to wear a helmet then he's too young to fight one does not speak unless one knows is that not the creed well i know perhaps this lesson is for you then (laughs) That's, that's such a kid thing to do. <laughs> like, well, well, I know. <laughs> that's totally right. I mean, that would take some serious arrogance on a kid's part. I mean, youthful rebellion, you know, but to talk back to somebody as badass as Din, who, true. you know, he's traveled the galaxy. It's true. You know, he you saved know, everyone's lives in the last episode. <laughs> yeah, he's flying around. For you to talk back, I don't know, that's more than just teenage rebellion. That's like, what the heck is going on there? Interesting. I do. So, so on, I do like that they have these very casual adult child interactions. Mm-hmm. Just just because they're stoic warriors doesn't mean that they can't talk to kids in like a very healthy fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this kid, yeah, he's uh, he's about to learn a lesson. <laughs> didn't <laughs> didn't call it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that kid's gonna be problems true eye protection they get in this fight so yeah the same kid right the same kid gets challenged by Grogu uh, and and they do the they do the the dart the dart battle (laughs) (laughs) no no way I mean if that kid had aimed a little bit higher no way was Grogu gonna dodge that he like was surprised that it hit him in the stomach Get him, right. get him a little some safety goggles. A little bit of a little bit of safety goggles. Yeah, I mean, that would be permanent damage to his big old eyes. Like, what? Right. Let's put some goggles on. Begin! <laughs> Those could have been a little bit higher, and Grogu will be blind forever. Right. So I don't think that kid is advanced enough to aim so well that there's no chance he would not hit that's right. His I mean, he did he did well here, but mm-hmm. could he guarantee that he did that perfectly every time? And you only need one stray shot to wreck Grogu's eyes forever. Heck, That's his right. nose, his mouth, his ears, the whole thing. Yep, get him some Rex Specs. My God, get him some Rex Specs. Is that what they're called? That's, I like. I it. don't know. That was a brand name from the '90s. I don't know if they're still around. <laughs> <laughs> we should bring him back. On the same section here, are they, this is this is where that bird comes in. This has happened before. They should just post someone up on that on that cliff. I I mean, even if you didn't know there was these dragon creatures or these monster crocodiles roaming around, you didn't even know that yet. It's still a good idea to post people on watch just for some unknown who knows what's coming thing you know right the fact that they don't have any early warning system which could just be guys up on the cliffs um is wild to me what are they doing and this guy gets swiped off of the beach that's right one of the younglings gets gets swiped off the beach and all it would take it would be it would be a few people maybe three four spread around maybe a mile away you give them cloaks so that they can cover up if they see something and if there's like an it's like an imperial scout mm-hmm. ship coming in to find your 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 covert you say up oh, someone's coming up and then you cover up and everyone else has time to run into the run into the hole here yeah so they have As great is, cover if there was a tie fighter they would just be like oh look an entire covert <laughs> and that's their base right there <laughs> Got to get a little bit, of, a little bit of early warning. Yeah. Oh, so this is just—I don't know—they're 
I think they're they're chasing the dragon that's stole yes. stolen that kid. Um, and if you look at this, so we're we're flying with the the ships as they go through this canyon on ch during the chase. And you notice, do you see how there's these bathtub rings mm -hmm. where you can see the water line? Is there a dam or something nearby? Because right. this is this is like what a dam looks like. If the water level has a maximum up to here, and the water level sitting down here, you get these these mm -hmm. zones of what look like bathtub rings. And it is, as it like seasonally rains, the water comes up and down, and then you yeah. get these like these rings. Yeah. So and that's different. That's different than flooding because you really need to have this like sitting around water. Mm -hmm. Flooding will just it'll push the the water level up and then drain away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess there's a dam somewhere, and this just happens to be the dry season. I guess it, you know, a lot of planets on in the Star Wars universe, you know, even though they're like backwater, they still have you know towns and civilizations on them. So one might have a dam. It could be you know 50 miles away from the Mandalorians, but it could be there. In fact, that would be a very good place to hide a planet with life, because if you have a planet without humanoid life, then you see any traces of humanoid and it's like what's that right there what's up with that but mm -hmm. if you have a planet with like i don't know 20 kilometers away it's like there's an actual city then these people the mandalorians the the children of the watch could hide upstream and nobody would notice them yeah it's also a confirmation that life can live on the planet there's not some unknown reason why it's poisonous or who knows what yeah or i guess whatever life lives down here mm -hmm. we don't know if it's people downtown who knows? Maybe we'll find out. We'll find out. Maybe, maybe. She came back. She came back. Bo-Katan. She goes off to, to chase the bird. Chase the dragon. Beautiful in the sunset. Oh. I kept a high altitude and followed it to its lair. I know how to get there. When I was watching this, I was like, she's, she's going to chase the dragon down. And the Mandalorians are going to go back and try and follow up. And she's going to keep chasing. Nope, she does a big old U-turn, comes back to the camp. She's like, I know where it is. What? 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 Like, did she think that bird, that, that dragon's going to, like, wait to eat the kid later? Like, is she going to, like, dry age the kid? Like, no, you, like, you got to rescue the kid now. Yeah. I, I'm speechless. Okay. Also, the, the Mandalorian pursuit party. So it was, like, Din and, and three other people. They ran out of jetpack fuel. So, like, they walk back. <laughs> it was a oh, while. Oh shit! Yeah. How? <laughs> well, I guess somebody with a jetpack could have hauled jetpacks to them, dropped them off, and then come back. Or like Although, grab, use their jetpacks, yeah. like hug them and bring them back. Yeah, okay. 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 Something. And and yeah. I guess Bogotan and Din are the only ones that have ships here, so I can mm -hmm. see how they're not in pursuit. Yeah. But Bo-Katan, like, 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 I got your kid, don't worry. Yeah. You just go there and you, you observe and you come back. Like, he's probably fine right now. I don't have eyes on him, but probably this dragon I've never seen before. Like, yeah. he got a bit of time. <laughs> Even if it is in those dragons' behavior to, like, slow eat, slow roast the, their, <laughs> you know, captured prey. Yeah. To, to infuse the flavor, yeah. It's still, it's, he's still captured. He could still die. Yeah. Yeah. time is of the essence what the heck what what if they get to the kid later and he like, was eaten like two seconds for like rescue him now rescue right. him right now yeah or the the dragon just bites off a leg or something and he bleeds out like okay what i thought they should have done here is is bo katan she could have yelled at some few a few mandos and be like hey get in my ship with me we're chasing we're in pursuit she could use her ship to just just crash into the dragon and then when the dragon's like what the heck is this and drops the kid then she could deploy some of the mandalorians just like she did with din in in the previous episode and then they can go with their jetpacks and grab the kid and everything's fine mm -hmm. like i feel like that's would be a mando tactic like aggressive assertive none of this recon yeah. like get in there you know and even if even if she they just let the dragon fly to its nest and as soon as it lands the mandalorians drop out grab up the kid yeah. jetpack away reach back up to the ship and off they go mm -hmm. yeah you want some kind of aggressive tactics like what that's like aggressive precision executed coordinated mm -hmm. these people are warriors for life yeah and we know mandalorians have practiced that dive out of the ship oh yeah because din and bo did it on that castle planet without even practicing beforehand so mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. And, and in season two, maybe, we've seen Bo and a few other Mandalorians leave the ship that they're attacking. And so, like, they know how to jump off ships, no problem. Yeah. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, what is Mandalorian? Mm. But I guess maybe maybe she's new to the covert, so she doesn't have, like, the social clout to be like, you two, get in here. Like, but, but I'm sure, like... If she was like the armor, the armor would be like, yeah, you two get in, get in the ship with her. But let's say she started the pursuit and for, and just, you know, cause it was happening so quickly. She just jumped in and took off without putting anybody in the ship with her. I don't think you, you stop the pursuit even then, you know, that's right. You put a little, little tracking beacon on. And like like alert, tell everyone where to go. And then you say, I'm going to harass this dragon. I'm going to bother them so they can't eat. And then yeah. everyone follow up on me. Yeah. And does the ship maybe have like an auto hover? Oh. So she could drop out? Some, mm -hmm. you know. Heck yeah. You don't even need to fight the thing. You just need to hover and shoot one of those, you know, like the, what is it? Non-lethal deterrence. It's like a dazzler laser. Just, just blind the thing. And then it's like, oh, what the heck? And it, it yeah. leaves the kid, it flies mm -hmm. up to fight you, and you get send up some other mandos to come take the kid out. Mm -hmm. Nobody dies. Mm. One one annoyed dragon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> choose your prey better, dragon. Yeah. Don't actually. Yeah. <laughs> Teach it a lesson. Don't mess with us. Yeah. She came back. Yeah. But good, good. She's safe. So this is them, this is Bo and some other Mandalorians. That's Din on the left. And the big guy who's the father of the, the kid who got taken away by the dragon is on the right. And then it's the forger? The, the armor and, armor. and Bogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so they're planning out the pursuit of the dragon. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's just this map's pretty cool. Somehow they surveyed the planet and uploaded the, the data onto Bo's ship when she landed and able to do this 3D projection so they can plan the pursuit. It's pretty cool. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. super cool. Super cool, this like 3D graphic. It'd be so, I guess, tactically advantageous to have a 3D model of the place you're about to attack. Yeah. I wonder, did they just survey it? Because like, if they if they surveyed the planet in the past, um, <laughs> they should know where the nest is. That's true. <laughs> just go attack it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and who's in charge of making sure this data is all up to date and synchronized and surveys mm -hmm. are happening? I don't see any like badass surveyors out there. <laughs> There's like IT one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's one Mando guy. He he doesn't have any scratches on his armor. <laughs> he, he like takes off his helmet. Helmet. He's got glasses on. He's super nerdy. Super <laughs> nerdy. Pen pen pocket. <laughs> a pocket protector. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, logistics is super important. Mandalorians need it too. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, who's keeping track of all that Beskar? Like, somebody could be stealing a little bits at a time, right? Like, That's true. Inventory I guess management. Creed, I guess by creative people are good. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Inventory management, great point. Because, like, for even for the practice starts that the kids have, like, you got to make sure you're stocked up. <laughs> That's right. What if you need to make more? Hmm. Very important. Very important. Ooh, this room. I also saw this. Go ahead. Go, go, go. So, so this is, we're inside the uh, the armorer's forge. Mm -hmm. uh, and these, I don't know what you call them, canyons or like little tubes. They look like flood-worn walls to me, mm -hmm. which means we could be in a flash flood zone right here. So like 360 days out of the year or 95% of the year on this planet, it's dry. But for that 5%, it could be a flash flood that comes like that. This thing. People go to the Grand Canyon and take pictures in here. This is exactly what this, this is exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. These like yeah. smoothly worn but mm -hmm. wavy tunnels. Like this is flash flood just ripping through here and, and, and carving out the rock. Yeah. And so if I saw they this. built their covert in here, like. Yeah. Let's get flooded real quick. I saw this video of a flash flood and it was it was hard to watch because it's people scary. are just chilling and then within like 30 seconds it's they're overwhelmed with water and you're like what the what? Right. 
and it's some thunderstorm right. like 30 miles away you can't even hear right yeah and then you just see a little bit of water and you're like that's weird what's going on you actually see people go towards it first and then you see them backing away and you're like please run away but it's yeah. fast flash floods it's are fast fast and especially even in if these... it doesn't like oh yeah 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 when you go from a wide area down to like a city street or or like a wide river down to these narrow little holes that, that we're looking at here the water needs to go faster to get through yep a lot of momentum incredible air will escape the best the best yeah. scene here we go this entire sequence Goku, oh no the younglings <laughs> <laughs> Go! Ah! Grogu, close, close Grogu. the pod. Everything's gonna be alright, kid. <laughs> Immediate. <laughs> oh, so cool. Oh, got him. See ya. That's, that's how I played all of like, the, the Jedi Knight games. You just push people off cliffs. Like, oh, yeah. I never did a lightsaber fight. And, and Star Wars never has safety rails, so you're just pushing people off. You know, they don't get stuck <laughs> on the safety railing. <laughs> you can do like really discreetly too. You just walk by, you flick a finger, like force push. <laughs> people fall off the edge. <laughs> and the chase. Oh my gosh. They hit the engine. This is gonna get a little rough. Aren't these ships hitting, like, killing hundreds right now? I mean, they're they're hitting buildings, you know, as they fly by. They're killing huh. hundreds, right? Huh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, when they go through that tunnel with the train, like, that's a head-on collision with the train. Right. <laughs> that then the explosion spills out into the building around them. You know, we're killing. There's like, there's probably tens of people dying for every blast that's below horizontal. Add it all up. You're hundreds, maybe even thousands of people are going to die. It's crazy. And you know what? The Emperor probably said it was the Jedi's fault. Ooh. What is the Jedi's fault? They had to pursue him through the city. Yeah, they're pursuing the criminals. Yep. That's right. That's right. Every time they miss, it's hitting a building in the background. Yeah, yeah somewhere. <laughs> so, somebody's chilling at home and just laser blast. Mm-hmm. So cool, oh, you madman! Oh gosh! Oh gosh! This is so tactically terrible because, like, you're confined a little hole, mm -hmm. and then like the ships can just shoot at you from behind. This is such a risky maneuver. Yep, but he does have the force on his side, so <laughs> maybe maybe he can like move out of the way as they shoot from behind. Just the little, little little micro dodges, and it's more dis it's more disadvantageous for the ships in pursuit than it is for him. It's true. Maybe. Because now Maybe. they're confined. They also can't move around. Right. Could be a truck driver on this day. And there's the mountain top. The mountain top. Oh, I didn't notice that. There's the mountain top. There it is, yeah. Apparently, maybe this has some kind of importance. I'm not sure. Some force sensitive mountain top. Who knows? That would be neat. Yeah, like, yeah, Coruscant's such a special planet. It's got to be force sensitive. It's got to be. Don't worry. We're going to meet up with some friends of mine. But hold on. It's going to be a bumpy landing. It's going to be a bumpy landing. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> they shot the engines. And so, like, you can still go faster, though. You just can't slow down. <laughs> Back. They're right behind me. What about the others? There are no others. Oh, upgraded. The red type. Oh. This is a Nabooian ship. It's a Naboo ship, right? It's a Naboo ship, yeah. So also, Naboo, is ahead, Naboo engineering really good that people are using it preferentially? It's crazy. Yeah, right. Hmm. Also, these guys, the the people that crewed the ship, they're real quick to sacrifice themselves. I mean, that's true. everyone get on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get on the ship. That's right. Because <laughs> on that platform, now that the ship's gone, there's nowhere to go, right. except to the afterlife. Except to the ground. <laughs> that's true. Maybe they have parachutes. Oh. 
I just want to say, great, oh, Grogu. Grogu. Great communication between the different types of Im Imperial, I guess now Imperial uh, troops, because oh, they like go- the clones. The clones. So they go, first it's clones, and then speeders, and then the speeders communicate with those bigger ships the to continue yeah. the pursuit. Then those bigger ships take combat losses, and then communicate right. with ground troops and TIE fighters to continue the pursuit as the Jedi is changing sh methods of transportation. And they've continued the pursuit throughout. They're on the fly, great communication throughout, taking combat losses, keeping their head in the game. I mean, no wonder the Empire won. Come on. Yeah, the logistics, super tight, <laughs> super clean, great comms. Did you know that they switched yeah. from blue to red? So it's it's they're communicating across squadrons. Like yeah. it wasn't even just within their own teams. They're like, no, 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 leaving our sector, going to your sector. This is where they are. Show up and like like seconds after the Jedi and and Grogu arrive, like dropships coming in. Absolutely. Whoo! Are Grogu. they the, are they the good side? I don't. I, they're at least the competent side. My God. Super competent. So the, now we're back on the unknown planet where the Mandalorians are. I don't know the name. Right. I don't know the name. And so they're doing like a silent approach to not spook the dragon. I guess that was the... So is a fire a good idea? Isn't that do tipping we... off the dragon that something's weird going on? Do we know it's day night cycle is if if we know for sure that it's going to be sleeping then i guess you could have a fire as long as it's far enough away that it's for sure not going to smell it either but um, you'd have to know really really well this dragon's behavior and everything right. Right. if you don't know i think no fire i think no fire and if you if you, you go left then they have to separate to eat like this is tactically unwise, isn't it? Yeah. Aren't they... I mean, we've we've seen the crocodile guy and the dragon guy. What if there are also like raptor type guys around and then they get picked off That's one true. at a time? That's true. They don't even have helmets on. So they can't calm quietly. They have to like scream for help. And now it's like the dragon's like someone's screaming down below my house. <laughs> yeah. What so the, ad the adherence to this helmet on at all times is hurting tactics? What? What? Okay. Mm-hmm. I should set up one of those concussion booths in the NFL, and you can go and eat, and then come out. Oh, yeah, I guess wait, wait, wait. they should. They could also just eat back to back. That's true. Army of two, back to back. That's back how Mandalorians back. eat. Mm -hmm. And just be like, "Is your helmet off?" Like, I'm not going to say. You're not going to look. Yeah. I might be. I might have my helmet on. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. Crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> yeah, this is more of the decision making. Um, this is very dangerous. Not super you know, dangerous. Not the Mandalorians haven't learned how to climb rock faces. You know, it's an additional skill they have, but it's still, you know, chances of falling to one's death is high. That's right. And you they all have jetpacks, so they can save themselves if they have enough time to reorient down. But then they're giving away themselves. Like, yeah, they, like they said that's why they can't use the jetpacks, because it's giving away something to the right. dragon. So what I thought they should do here, what I thought mm -hmm. was take Bo-Katan's ship, go mm -hmm. up super high, mm -hmm. and do a halo drop. So high altitude, low opening. Um, so I guess in this case, low rocket pack. If you're worried about rocket packs making sounds, then falling will be silent. So you just drop a squad from super high, and then they land on the nest. It's just last second, rockets out, and the bird's like, the, the dragon's like, what the heck? There are people here already. Yeah. So at that point, you use the element of surprise. Actually... Now that you say that, that has to be the way to do it. Because this is way too risky. And you come up and you're tired. Oh, you come up and you're tired, yeah. What what if the um what if the hill isn't like a sharp corner? What if it's like a slow descent? So like the the Mandalorians come up and then you gotta walk two miles and the bird's just like, I see you. <laughs> like, you're like, it, it, it wasn't guaranteed that the nest was gonna be like right on the cliff edge like that. Well, I guess Bo did recon. That's true. I mean, but so maybe how, it de is. how detailed is their recon? I mean, it would have to be superbly detailed because the the exact rocks at the top need to be well understood for this to mm -hmm. work out. If there's some yeah. kind of lip, you know, they're screwed. 
even a 50 foot approach. That means you climb over That's over right. the corner of the of the of the hill of the mesa, and then you're like 50 feet crouch walking, like trying to be real quiet. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think the halo drop. That is a great idea. Yeah. That's the proper tactics, I think, especially because you have access to jetpacks. You have jetpacks. You just last second turn your turn your feet to the ground, blast as hard as you can to stop, and then you're battle ready. Mm-hmm. We've seen we've seen Din do this, so they're all trained up. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Thermal vision? Yeah, this is just thermal vision in Din's helmet. Well, I guess it's oh, standard. Din's. They should be using this all the time. That's right. Why not? <laughs> you like, uses too much batteries. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, use this all the time. I mean, yeah, if it's a passive sensor, you know, use it all the time. <gasps> Ooh, actually, yeah, you get you get one person designated as the infrared guy, one person in, designated as the alt UV guy, and then that way you have all sorts of different vision mm-hmm. working at the same time. Yeah. So if if Din's like heat signature, the second person is like, nope, that's not human. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And I think in the modern world, IR sensors have this problem with temperature control. They oh. need to be very cold for some reason. Maybe that's not true. Depends. But I buy that. They, I buy that because if it's if it's infrared, it's heat stuff. So if you just if your infrared sensor is too hot, it's just picking up heat mm-hmm. everywhere like it needs to be in contrast to other stuff but i do know there are sensors like you know like digital camera sensors um that's that right are also on the infrared range but i think the infrared range is so huge i think it probably depends on where you are what frequency or wavelength you're at hmm. so i wonder what i wonder what wavelength this is yeah no idea I don't know. it's probably a false color image so it's not red red it's some other some i guess it's infrared so it's some type of color that our eyes can't perceive right and then and then the camera converts it to this color mm-hmm. right hmm. cool should we be mandalorian generals maybe we should we should we should totally be we should he's my son oh yeah so i was so mad at this guy the father of the kid who got captured where i was like he's like he's my son i'm like does that mean you can do bad tactics Come on, that means right. that means focus your tactics, get them locked in sharp. Right. That actually means he shouldn't be on the mission at all. That's right. That's actually true. Yeah. It's not here. Let's find the kid. I see a heat source there. Wait until we clear the area. He's my son. <laughs> Too reckless. Say he is on the mission. Wouldn't that mean he would be the one who's like, all right, sharp tactics? On point. Don't mess this up. Let's get this right. What's he doing? Running in against the book, you know, the tactics book. That's right. And he's disobeyed the creed. Yeah. Like Bo Katan is in command of the Ooh. war party. Like listen to her. Yeah. He okay. lost his head. This he lost a... his head and almost died. Like yeah. that's that's the covert needs him more than this one battle because there's so few of the children of the mm-hmm. watch left. Like like each life is super precious. Mm-hmm. I think his ability to be on a team is is now under question. Yeah, he already kind of doesn't trust Din and Bogdan, so. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then now that's he's leading into sloppy tactics and putting everyone's lives at risk. I don't know about this guy. Speaking of sloppy tactics, I um I was thinking about this is his kid, right? Yeah. But they have the code, they have the creed where they can't take off their helmets ever. Yeah. That means that when the kid was created, they kept the helmets on, right? Mm-hmm. Use protection. Oh. Safety first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, always. Mm-hmm. Complex ramp. This ship! <laughs> Imagine if any one of these little motors jam. Yeah. And Bokatan's like, uh, I guess I gotta just step out of this mess. <laughs> gotta yeah. squeeze through. <laughs> I just, you know, they're far away. They're on a sandy, far away from maintenance stations. They're on a sandy planet. They have a super complex mechanism. It's just a ramp. <sighs> That's right. Actually, it engages directly to the sand. This is this is the fastest way you can get grit and grindy stuff into your gears and just wears it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming it's designed to take on these hostile environments like this. 
Um, maybe. But maybe. it's probably going to need maintenance at some point, even if it can handle sand, which, holy crap, if it can handle sand. Yeah. Sand will wreck your, your bearings. Yeah. I wonder if that means that there are Mandalorians that are good at ship repair. Or is it just... Right. Or do, no, did Din say that it's important for every Mandalorian to... No, he to know how to pilot and navigate. But he still goes to that that mm, that woman and yeah, that does the uh space station not the space station the like that repair here oh yeah pelimoto he still goes to her for ship repairs so so who does bo go to for ship repairs right and that person's probably not on this particular planet so she's got maintenance schedules to keep you know adhering to mm-hmm. but She's stuck on a planet. She can't get stuck here because she right. won't be able to maintain it. That's right. So, I mean, I guess if that if that ramp does get stuck, she could always seal up her suit and fly no atmosphere. Like like Din did that once, true. right? That's true. Also, it'd be but, nice oh if there boy. was some kind of manual backup hmm. where you That's hit true. a button and it's stuck, but instead you can like... Crank, 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 crank. Just crank. grind out whatever grid is in there. Just, yeah. just I mean, hopefully the, the hand crank would somehow do some cleaning as well as it cranks through. True. I, I wonder, assuming... could you take off, just take off the ground a little bit and then through the vibrations? <laughs> Sand and oil and lubricants. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, It'll stick to it. So they're, now the Mandalorians, if they don't have their own you know, logistics people and maintainers, they're dependent on outside people for maintenance. That's right. Now, now they have to build this re- these relationships with these maintainers to trust them. Right. <sighs> and the maintainers could overcharge them and then bleed out their society of wealth. Like, That's right. It's gotta, will, they, they got to have internal they should maintainer have internal. people. Plus, they have something of value that they could get gouged for, which is Beskar. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like, I want a lot of Beskar. That's too much Beskar. Well, okay, then you're stuck on this planet because I'm not going to fix your ships. <laughs> like, yeah, you could yeah. really get extorted. <laughs> oh, I'll just fly over to another mate. No, you won't because you're stuck here. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead this, and threaten me. Then your entire, your entire covert's stuck here forever. <laughs> Go ahead. This goes back to when we were looking at Mandalore and the ruins of the cities. There had to have been a full working society with maintainers and you know, log- logistics people and all kinds of stuff, you know, for sure. Warrior accountants, warrior, warrior accountants. lawyers, warrior mm-hmm. mm, land prospectors, That's right. warrior. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole they thing, would, absolutely. It still needs to be a functioning society. Yeah. They're just also warriors. Just also warriors. So yep. cool. How fit. Yeah. How fit. <laughs> How big is the ship? <laughs> it just looks a little cramped in there. That's all. <laughs> also, are they are the Mandalorians? Are the is the are the children of the Watch? Are they going to eat these birds or enslave them? I thought they were going to train them like like horses or something. Like war birds? Oh my gosh! Yeah. That'd be, so super be like cool. war dragons. We don't know the life cycle of these things. Like that could be <laughs> that could be like two hundred <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, that could be many years down the road. That's right. Is Grogu going to ride these in the battle? Be like Dracarys. <laughs> where where are my dragons? <laughs> That's the first words that Grogu speak. Yeah. Plus, these dragons would only be good on this particular planet because they can't go into space. It's true. Is it I worth mean, it? Can f- oh, man, that's right. By the time they're big enough to be in combat, like you'd have to get a big old ship carrier. Mm-hmm. And what if you bring them to a planet where their air density isn't high enough? <laughs> they just like, well, it's time to fight. They just sink to the ground. <laughs> sink to the ground, yeah. <laughs> it's not enough air. And you have mm. to feed them the whole time? Oh, boy. Yep. We'll see I where this, this goes. This is tactically unwise. Unless unless they're super intelligent. If they're very, very intelligent, they could be a big asset. But if they're just okay. like horses or dogs who have good intelligence but not enough to be like an actual squad member, mm. then I don't think I it's worth it. So you're saying if they're like Daenerys' dragons, those things were smart. Like they could figure stuff out. Mm-hmm. Like they knew where to attack and stuff. Like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe Daenerys plus. Daenerys they, they plus. I think smart. you actually need verbal. You need 
some verbal or sign communication that could be really powerful you know these like dogs on instagram where they like have these buttons and you like, like push the button and it's like like i want treat like treat oh, now yeah. me like, like, like things like that you get the same things for these dragons <laughs> like dragon attack and the dragon's like dragon walk now <laughs> mm-hmm. well i was thinking even more advanced like actual grammar and everything that could be worth it attack 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 the base i don't want to i don't want to <laughs> well that's the thing if they could actually become members of the squad and be brought into the mandalorian creed then they oh, would want to attack okay. the base i see what you're saying you're saying like sentient smart yeah yeah like, like oh, yeah. okay 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 and then yeah they're like you make them take the oath they get their own little helmets and like yeah, yeah. actually they'd be super badass oh my gosh yeah. they'd be badass I see, I see what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> Good landing, weird landing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's check out the physics of the landings. There were there were different ones in this episode. They didn't look they didn't look quite mm-hmm. right. Oh oh, muted. So I thought that one was good because to slow down, they use the arrow braking by increasing the surface hitting the oncoming air, which is the wings rotating up. Okay. And then the as it slows down, the thrust is down to keep it above the ground and slowly move it down. So I was okay with that. Okay. So arrow braking plus downward thrust equals vertical landing. I was super confused. This this one didn't feel good to me because I was I thought that's like there's so much ship out here. There's so much ship out here and the rockets the like the engines are going down. Like shouldn't this thing be like tipping? Like shouldn't it be tipping forward? Like so my only comment to that is sometimes, you know, the volume of an aircraft or a spacecraft doesn't match up well with where the mass is distributed. So like the, this nose could be extremely light and not contributing much to the, to the oh. mass. So center mass truly is near back where the engines are. So like this could be, a, for example, like, yeah, this could be a bunch of actually hollow, just air, yeah. just shaped like this for air aerodynamics yeah this could be like like electronics and Mm -hmm. so actually all the mass is really back there right kind of like in like a 747 like in the front there even Mm -hmm. though it's big and bulbous in the front there's like electronics in the front and like Mm -hmm. like, you know what i'm talking about like the nose tip yeah Um, but really the most of the mass is wherever your mom's sitting oh my god (laughs) speechless Okay, so good landing. Yeah. So the next one, this one is super weird to me. So the yeah. thrust is, so the, 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 the fuel is getting, the, the gases are getting thrown out backwards, which is going to push the craft towards the nose. And maybe a which bit I guess up. in this picture is towards this, this wall here. That's right. This mountain. But somehow it's accelerating toward the camera. Uh, yeah, looks so weird. It looks weird, right? It look reminds me of like you know when you go to Disneyland and you're on these these like carts cars that have steering wheels, but the steering wheels don't do anything because you're on a track. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of that. Like like you're telling it to go this way, but the car is just sliding somewhere because something it's it's on a rail system that's telling it where to go. Mm-hmm. Like these, it looks like these engines don't do what they're supposed to do. I mean, they must because it's eventually when it gets close to the ground, those engines are the only thing holding it up. Mm -hmm. So they're working here. Otherwise, it would just slam into the ground. I guess what causes it to turn? What causes it to turn? Maybe it, uh, even the aerodynamic braking is only going to slow it down. It's not going to. Is it going to change its, like, I guess you could somehow they, they, those wings as they rotate up, generate some sort of lift that push it toward the camera. I guess. Yeah. It looks like it wouldn't work. And and it looks really funny to me. Now that I think about, about it, like how does she control her role? Like I, I can imagine maybe the one wing is tilted more than the other. So that's mm-hmm. how you get 
more force you start you can start turning this way because yeah. the wind's coming toward start turning this way but like if they're slanted like this that means you also get different di- different down forces so how does this thing her ship not roll over yeah so if it has maybe it has some really advanced you know software control so even though the right. aerodynamics of these wings that rotate is extremely complex complicated yeah but if you know if you can characterize what happens and you give an input to the joystick the computer can be like this is what we need to do and then it does the <laughs> complex thing to make it yeah. happen but yeah. if you directly controlled these things as a human it would take a trem- maybe it's even impossible because it's so complex right apparently this is modern aircraft design requires computer control because they design them to be aerodynamically unstable and they do micro corrections to keep them stable so if you need to turn you just you unstabilify them apparently if i remember the reason you don't want it to be if the reason you want it to be unstable is because you want to be to be able to turn if it's super stable then the plane will keep itself in that orientation that's right because it's stable yeah so you actually want it to be unstable so that when you want to turn it, it'll go so um, maybe this is what's happening here is it's actually really advanced and it's unstable and the software is controlling that it knows how to do all the little micro corrections mm-hmm. okay, okay 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 i'm down i buy it ah uh, yes so this here notice this is um this is bo and she has a new pauldron on so mm-hmm. during the fight she she lost a pauldron this was her her um, night owl, and oh man, I I it looks like she's heading towards the beach, maybe the water, but this pauldron's definitely going towards towards the land. So does that mean that? And, and here she is, definitely definitely missing the pauldron. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that there's like some beskar, some like something like high quality beskar, just chilling out on the beach? Like, oh yeah, should they go get that? They should go get that for reforging at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say it's too damaged from the fall. Melt it down, build something new. Even <laughs> if you're just going to trade for it, trade it for stuff, you could get a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so Person. some scavenger is going to come through here and pick it up. <clears throat> the other thing I thought about was the armor says that she can reforge, she can forge some new, a new pauldron, a new shoulder, I guess right shoulder, new shoulder guy. Um, and but she says the the armor says I cannot I can make it but I won't have all like the modern refinements. Um, what does that mean? Because she the armor makes this this rondel for for Grogu, and what is all the tech going on here? Because <laughs> like it's just it's just a disc on his chest. Like <laughs> what? True. What what tech? And also this doesn't count as modern refinements. Like what what is the shoulder thing for Bogatan? Maybe they're just running low on supplies. And so Which means go get that one. <laughs> go get the one that you dropped. That's true. If that has all the modern accoutrements. Accoutrements, yeah, that's very nice. <laughs> then you scavenge those out of the one that dropped, put them in the new one. And you solve the best car. You give a bunch of kids jetpacks, you call it jetpack training. You go out there and you go find the pauldron. You know, I didn't even think about this, but Absolutely, I'm I'm on board. Like, mm-hmm. you got to mm-hmm. go find it. Go find it. Also, gosh, say these is like this. Uh, the Empire little scout droids are floating around, and they're like, "Huh, Beskar, that's weird." Mm. Come back, and investigate Empire. Mm. Just mm. go find it. Go find it. Be like ninjas. I don't know, no matter how Matrix. you look at it, they got to go find it. Got to go find it. Imagine if she did pick it up again, and then she, she went to the armor. And she's like, "I know it's a night owl, but uh, can you change it to a mythosaur?" <laughs> and the armor is like, "What? Like, I, I just, I really want one." I mean, actually, why not? She's starting fresh. Would they not do that? Oh yeah, that's true. And the mythosaur is for everyone, so why not? Why not? Yeah. Good point. And I think that's it. All right, that was it. That was it for season three, episode three. Four. So episode four. four. So <laughs> all in all, um, I guess 
Grogu got his first gun, <laughs> so he's got that like the darts. I hope that he upgrades like a Glock. That'd be that'd be sick. Uh, <laughs> they they left some they left some Beskar on the beach, and um, Bogatan now wears the Mythosaur on her right pauldron. Yeah, she's she's lining up this like I'm going to take over all the Mandal- Mandalorians. Not take over. I'm going to lead them, and this is mm-hmm. going to be the symbol, the symbol of my house, the mm-hmm. Night Owl, and the symbol of everyone, the Mythosaur. Mm-hmm. And we don't really know where the Mandalorians are going to go from here. They've got some serious problems. Mm. So. Yeah. But they do know that Mandalore is re-inhabitable. They That's walked true. down there and it was not irradiated. It was safe to go down there. There was Beskar in those mines. And not in the mines. It was Beskar in like the little monster base thing. Mm-hmm. So we think, I would predict, that they're going to go back to Mandalore. And they're going to start mm. setting up civilization again. I hope so. Mm-hmm. That'd be very cool. They better get to f- keep the helmets on. Keep the helmets. Oh on. man, they could like maximize their genetic diversity by not knowing who they're. F- oh my gosh! It's true. You put randomness on top of randomness mm-hmm. for the civilization. This is the way. This is the way. Right. See you next time. <laughs> see you next time. Next, next time. <laughs> see ya. See ya. And admin. Yeah. Did you hear my garage door go? I did not. Okay. Did you I hear any? I recording. heard there, my parents were working some door over there. Did you hear it? I did not. Was it towards the end while we were doing the outro? No. Oh. Mine was doing the outro. No, I didn't hear it. Um, so do we redo the outro or just like as a backup option or just send it? I say send it. Send it. Okay. Then we return to our shutdown procedures. Recording. Closing remarks? No, that was fun. Super fun. Date. Uh, type title. Okay. 2023-0326. This is the recording for the TV series The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4, Video 1 of 1. Uh, March 26th, 2023, TV show The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 4. In 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. In 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Also, this was video 1 of 1. My cards. I have a minute 2 on the clock. Minute two on the clock. Shut down. Shut down.